Okay guys, when we talk about suction control valves and rail pressure or target rail pressure, I wanted to give you guys a quick overview of what the actual ECU goes through or the steps that it goes through in its fuel calculations and, and what it does in terms of selecting a target rail pressure and then selecting the fuel quantity in which it needs to go. So a lot of the time we talk about suction control valves, we can actually see that a suction control valve, if it's giving us grief or it's not actuating properly and we, we're getting a large variance of the actual rail pressure in terms of minimum and maximum as opposed to, you know, if a suction control valve works really well, it operates in quite a narrow band. We see the engine in many cases will show feedback values far worse than, than when you put a new suction control valve in it. And we also see the engine in many cases uses more fuel or, or be a little bit rattly or, or, you know, will hesitate or sometimes stall and things like that. So I wanted to show you guys why that is and the actual lengths that the ECU goes through in order to calculate the fuel value. So first things first, when we talk about an old, old non-common rail diesel engine, effectively the engine breathes as much as it can. It's always going to absorb 100% 100 100 of the oxygen that it can, boost pressure notwithstanding. Now, that fuel, when we talk about, like say a petrol car, for example, we're always targeting a set air fuel ratio of 14 to 12 and a half or somewhere thereabouts, parts per air to one part of fuel. And the reason for that is, Petrol can only operate at that very, very, very narrow air fuel ratio because if we step outside that range, it'll actually superheat the piston and actually melt the motor. Diesel is very, very different. Diesel, we don't actually, that you cannot run a diesel lean per se. It, it runs lean by very nature. The only thing that can happen is if you get very rich AFRs, say 14 or 12, that you start bellowing out black smoke, but that's it. So when we talk about the older engines, they used to just swallow 100% of air and we would just put in the amount of fuel that we want, and that was it. When we talk about the new common rail diesels, however, in order for these things to meet the emission standards, and let's be honest, it's the only reason why common rail exists, they had to actually target a set AFR. Now, when we look at how they actually target an AFR, in order to target an AFR, they actually have to know what the airflow actually is. So we start to see a whole range of new sensors come in and it's actually become very, very much like petrol injection was and still is. So we can start to see things like air intake temperatures, mass airflow, coolant temp, fuel temp, and intake pressure sensor or manifold air pressure sensors. So all of these things are there to give the ECU an idea of the amount of air that's being swallowed by the engine. So then we get into what it's actually doing as far as the calculation is concerned. A diesel is always going to swallow air. We don't really run a throttle situation, although many cars do now have a, a small throttle position that might have three positions as opposed to, you know, just the old diesels that had flat out. But regardless, when we're cruising down the highway, we're holding 3% boost or, or, or five, 3 PSI, 5 PSI or whatever the VNT turbo will give us, it won't actually target an AFR at that point of view because we're not worried about emissions when the air fuel ratio might be 35 to one or something similar. So the ECU looks at two things. It looks at, first things first, it'll calculate a basic injection quantity. Now your basic injection quantity is given by my engine speed rotations are this and my throttle percentage is you know x and y for example now the throttle position if we've got it only 25 percent and we're holding 2500 rpm as we might be going down the highway we're obviously in a cruise position so it will in select the basic injection quantity the next thing it's looking at is what the maximum injection quantity at this point can be so if it's looking at manifold airflow manifold uh air pressure and things like that, it will say, okay, now if, if they're only asking for 25% uh, throttle, my AFR to do that will be say 30 to one. But at this point with that amount of airflow, I can target 16 to one, which gives me a, maybe an injection quantity of say 50 and the top really only needs an injection quantity of say 20, 25. So it actually will always calculate both fuel quantities. A, the maximum based on all of the sensors, and then B, the maximum based on just the throttle and engine speed. It will then select, obviously, the lesser one of these, because if we're cruising, we don't want full power, we just want to be able to cruise at 100k an hour. So it'll select the low side when, well, after doing both simultaneously. 
then it'll look at corrected fuel quantity. So when we look at, obviously, the amount of fuel that we inject inside the cylinder is going to be directly linked to the rail pressure. So if I hold the injector open for a thousand microseconds at 1600 bar, it's going to be twice the amount of fuel as if I hold it open for a thousand microseconds at 800 bar because the density of the fuel behind it is exactly half. So when we're looking at this, it then looks at, okay, if I want 60 cc's of fuel, what's my rail pressure and how is that going to dictate the amount of time that I have to hold it open for? So it, first of all, so it's done both calculations, it's worked out what's the least, then it'll look at the density of the rail, it'll then calculate what the time base needs to be. After it's done that, then it'll actually look at what the individual cylinder correction is. So when we talk about a coding structure, a coding structure is important to put inside the injector because it tells the ECU in order to get this fuel at that rail pressure, this injector needs this amount of time to get that done. So it then individually varies the amount of time it holds the injector open for at that point based on that code for each and every individual cylinder. So when we talk about target rail pressure, all of this is taken off of target rail pressure value because the target rail pressure is actually a separate part of the ECU that it's running the closed loop system. If you haven't watched the common rail pump video, you'll need to watch that in order to understand it. But it's running a closed loop calculation based on suction control valve and rail pressure sensor. So it runs that over here to govern the actual rail pressure, which is laced to a target rail pressure. And the target rail pressure is what is utilized in this actual calculation here. So when we talk about suction control valves and the variance in actual rail pressure that they give, it can actually make a very, very big difference to the way the engine runs because we're looking at a target here and the actual is all the way up there because the, the suction control valve is not correctly metering the fuel or vice versa, it can be down here. And even if the ECU is watching the actual and allowing for the actual inside this calculation, the actual, the actual rail pressure is moving and varying that fast. If you've ever watched it on, on real time in terms of the output of the OBD cables, you will see that there is no way that by the time it's calculated this, then calculated the rail pressure density, and then calculated the individual cylinder corrections and then fired them, by the time it's at this part of the calculation, the next part has already changed, which is the density of the other end of the equation. So, the only thing I guys really want you to take away from here is the actual injection quantity and the time frame that it takes to do all these things is rather quite involved and takes, although it only happens in a mere fraction of a second, in terms of what is dynamically happening in the engine, it is quite a lot and it's happening very quickly. So at the end of the day, this is where a lot of these engine performance comes from and why the suction control valve again is so critical in what's going on. So I hope you guys found that interesting and uh, yeah, keep watching.